Hey, it's Jake Mace with jakemace.com. There's four moves that are simple that I teach my students to use on the street if they ever have to defend their life against somebody for real. Personally, for me, I have 10 moves that are in my arsenal that are my 10 go-to moves if stuff ever went down. I bring these 10 moves out to defend my life. Before we start, please hit the like button for me and check me out on social media, Jake Mace Tai Chi on Instagram and Snapchat. The moves I'll show you in this video are great ones to practice in your martial arts school before class begins or after class ends. They're from Tiger, Bird, and Monkey Style Kung Fu. Let's get to the first one right now. So the first move is against somebody who's gonna throw that right cross against you, and we're gonna block it just like this. If I spin that this way, this is the block. One hand is vertical, one hand is horizontal. This is quintessential Bird Style Kung Fu. I'll teach you guys some Tao Lu and some Kata later on that will have this move in it over and over and over again. So when you're doing your kata, or when you're doing your tao lu from your school, and there are recurring moves over and over again inside the form, that was the ancients telling you these moves work. So again, that hook punch comes in block right here. That's the first step, block it. And get used to how it feels and how it looks to stop somebody without going back. I don't want you guys to lean back at all. I want you almost to jam them up. Get used to how it feels to step into the punch or step into the kick. Right? Jam it up. And we do this, and two things is happening. One, I'm getting used to range, comfort with somebody throwing a dangerous technique at me, and Matt's getting some iron bone training. Exactly. <laughs> How do you feel? Feels good. All right. Ah, very nice. And then, of course, you guys can tighten it up and make it really tight and more real as you get more confident with it. That punch Matt was just throwing is a nice, good training style punch. But as you get a partner you trust, you want to make it more real, Tighten that punch up and add some power to it. Simulate a boxer or a Muay Thai guy hitting you in the face. The second piece of this is once they punch you, we block. That was step one. Step two is spin, throw the elbow right to the face that way. What happens if his second hand tries to punch you? When that happens, I'm already spinning into the elbow. Pretty much my combination is faster than his combination. And the act of spinning during the fight really helps your self-defense abilities to deflect the attacks from your opponent somewhere else instead of into you. Block it, spin through, go for the elbow, and get out of there. Three more times. Block it, spin, hit, and get out of there. Again, they come in for that punch, block it, spin, hit it, and get out of there. Let me show you guys what this looks like in full speed and slow-mo. <laughs> There are four basic kicks that I teach all my students they must know how to do. The front kick, the roundhouse kick or round kick, the side kick, and the hook kick. Those are the fundamentals of all kicks in the martial arts. But there's a fifth kick that I think has the highest percentage of landing on your opponent's body. And that is the front thrust kick. So where the front kick comes underneath and Matt can block it down, just like that, the thrust kick goes forward and it's kind of hard to pick up. What do you think? A little bit. So when you're in your martial art class or you have a partner with you, try to do just 10 of these. They're gonna get abs of steel. You're gonna get good awareness of the front thrust kick. So we're both in that stance. Front thrust, push him back, come back to position. Front thrust, push him back, back to position. And you just go for about 10 of these, working on accuracy and range. How's your gut? Feels good. Next, we have to practice this front thrust, covering more distance before the hit happens. So I'm gonna be left leg forward, but my right leg will be delivering the kick. I'm gonna make an extra step. In my good stance, I step forward, then jump and hit the bag. I give him the bag so that now I can offer full power without worrying about my friend's safety, okay? So again, I start it slow and build up the power. Left forward. Step right, jump, front thrust. Again. Step right, jump, front thrust. Okay, that was like 20%. Now we'll up it and really go for it. Left leg forward, go. Maybe even start right leg forward and take two steps. One, two. 
Let's cut to this against the opponent full speed and slow-mo. <laughs> Definitely in my personal 10, to the death, fight moves for the street is the spinning sidekick. For me personally, my legs have always been pretty strong from my body size, and my butt and my thigh and my quad always seem to put a lot of power behind that sidekick, and the spinning side gives me that torque. I love it so much. So when we are training the spinning sidekick with our partner, we want to get a little bit of an angle here. I don't like delivering the spinning sidekick from straight on. I feel like it's too easy to pick up, they're gonna see it coming, and they could, like he did, he sidestepped it. So I will fake with other things, I'll get that angle, and then go for it, and that's the way I get it. In fact, last time we were together, we did this move. Correct. Right? Yep. Why am I always side kicking you in the gut? Apparently I leave it open too much. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, we're gonna practice five times with our partner, getting that angle, keep the hands up, get that angle, and spinning side kick, just to give him a little bit of ab training, and to give me some accuracy training. Okay, so a little side step, spinning second, that's three, four, and five. Now, that was not too bad, right? Yeah. Maybe. That was like half power. I was pulling it back, controlling it, all that jazz. Just working on my flow. We can do the same spinning side kick with a jump and make it faster and land with a higher percentage during the fight. So the same leg forward, I'm gonna jump off both legs at the same time as I spin at the same time, just like that. So jump off both legs, spin through, and then let that left leg go right to his gut and don't overthink it. Just get a partner who you trust, who you can have fun with and have some fun and do it all the time. Martial arts is supposed to be fun while you're training. Have fun now so you're more relaxed during the real fight later. Both feet jump together, throw that side kick. How's that? Good. It's faster by that half second. That half second is winning or losing, right? Winning or losing the game of life. The fight on the street. Sink down there, jump through, get that side kick. That's two. Three, you right. Yep. Four. One more. Five. We can also do this full speed if we have the kicking shield. Ooh. Monkey style kung fu likes to use the hands with these overhooks. It likes to have the hands up by the head to cover, just like monkeys always preening, preening. Monkey and Mantis both have very similar ways of fighting, which is why a lot of times Praying Mantis utilizes monkey style footwork. If he throws two jabs straight at my face, pop, pop, I can use these monkey hooks to try to just cover them. Even if I can't block both of them, hopefully I'll at least divert half the power, okay? So I'm here in a good relaxed stance and I'm gonna hook hook and just practice what that looks like. They might hit you with one, but I'm willing to get punched in the face as long as I deflect most of the power. And as soon as I do that, I'm gonna move in. So when his following two hooks come in, I can just hold my hands up and cover those things like the monkey guarding the head. So the first two attacks, we go cover, cover, move in, cover, cover, and now I'm inside to grab onto his neck, and now once I've got him, it's over. Once the wrestler grabs the boxer, it's over. I'm gonna tell you guys honestly, I think 99 times out of 100, a wrestler, will always beat a boxer in a street fight. The wrestler cannot beat the boxer with punches in a boxing match. But on a street fight, a wrestler is able to take a couple hits. And then once the boxer gets grabbed, his days are done, in my opinion, in my experience, okay? Not to diss all my boxing friends out there, but for street fighting, wrestling is the edge. And monkey style kung fu is that. We hook, hook, come in, cover, cover, grab onto that head, now use all my body weight and use all of my horse stance to drop and put his nose by his knee. 
grab behind his ankle or his heel, and then pull his foot toward me as I shoot his collarbone back down to the floor. Now I do not need to follow him. I'm gonna throw the leg in the air and get out of there. One more time, cover, cover, move in, hit, hit, grab. I've got him now. Put his nose by his knee, grab onto this foot right here, pull the foot toward me, shuck his collarbone back. Back flop him, throw it in the air and get out of there. Again, cover, cover, get in there, grab it, pull it down, shuck him back, get out of there. You guys practice these four moves every single day. Get somebody who you can fight, who you can have fun with. You can build your skills and your confidence with. Martial arts improves confidence. It improves fitness, health, self-defense, street survival, longevity. Because when you know how to fight, when you know how to protect yourself, it improves your overall life. It can improve business, relationships, goals, health and fitness. The martial arts is supposed to be trained so you can take the skills you're developing and use them to enhance your life. Check out my man Matt on Instagram. All the links are down below. Jake Mace Tai Chi on social media. Hit the like button and comment down below. We'll get in there and answer some questions. Thanks for this bracelet today. My pleasure. And if you guys stick through past the credits, got a bonus scene for you. It's important to bring these four moves out of the stage of drilling and into free sparring. So also when you're free sparring somebody your next class, Try to land each one of these four moves against every single student in your school. When you can land it against everybody, no matter what belt or what size they are, you're ready to defend yourself for real. put in these pull-up bars because in my opinion martial artists are always very good at strengthening their deltoid their triceps and their chest because of all the push-ups we do all the striking that we do but most traditional martial artists neglect the pulling muscles they neglect the lats and the back muscles and the biceps so in my backyard kung fu warrior training facility I like to put in rope climbs and pull-up bars and things like that so that we train the areas that I'm deficient in so these pull-up bars, I put them high enough where they're challenged to jump to and we built them ourselves, we welded them ourselves and then I put multiple bars just enough distance apart that I could try to spider monkey swing between them, which I haven't done yet, or I did one time. So let's do it once with you guys and see if we can do it. Because honestly, this is the first day I've actually used these guys. Ugh. Oh, it works! <laughs> Your turn, Matt. Let's do it. All right. Oh, 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 so, close. so close. You got it. Come on, get in there.